Lake Michigan Christian Center. I'm so glad you could join us for our online service. I've got a great message about relying upon the Lord. But before we get to that, can you do me a favor? Like this message on YouTube so we can expand our reach and also send a link to as many people as you know. Let's get as many people watching our online service this week. All right, take care and I'll see you on the other side of the meet and greet. Well, for about 15 years, I was a substitute teacher, along with being a youth pastor and a senior pastor. And probably, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago or so, I had the distinct privilege of serving as a substitute teacher for a kindergarten class. I only did it once. And, um, and when I finished subbing for that day, two things came to mind. Number one, how exhausted I was. And number two, my profound appreciation for every kindergarten teacher in America, because it was quite the experience. And um, probably the main uh, thing that I remember from that day was that the kids were continually asking me, what are we going to do now? What's next? What are we going to do now? So they kept asking to the point where I just basically went on the board and wrote every 15 minutes, we're going to do this, 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 and this, and this. Because if I didn't, they would just keep asking. So as we completed something, I erased it and we just kind of went down the list. But that was something that I had never uh, recognized that, that was really important for little kids as far as just understanding what, what's next. And, and structure was a big deal. I've never looked forward to recess or lunch in my life as when I was a uh, substitute teacher for a kindergarten class. It was just an interesting experience. And if you got your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Acts, the first chapter. Because when we look at the departure of Jesus uh, to the Father, when he ascends to the Father, and, and Acts chapter 1 talks about that, the disciples are faced with the most profound what are we going to do now moment in their lives. Because, of course, they followed Jesus for three and a half years. They heard him preach. They saw the miracles. They saw the crowds. They saw his betrayal, his crucifixion, and his resurrection. Um, and, and then all of a sudden he departs. So, so they're now suddenly faced with this unenviable experience of Jesus is gone. Now what? What do we do now? <laughs> and, um, and, and the scripture tells us that for 10 days after Jesus' ascension, they went to an upper room and they did nothing but pray. Or at least they primarily prayed. Now, Jesus had told them in Acts chapter 1, verse 4, that as he was eating with them in his, in his glorified body, right? He could walk through walls. He would never die. He, he, he would live forever. He was eating food, which is really amazing because we're going to have the same glorified body when we go to be with the Lord, which is incredible. But here's what he says to them. He says, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait 
for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. So they knew to wait for something that the Lord had promised. The Lord had said, wait in Jerusalem until you're endued or clothed with power from on high. So if we fast forward now to the ascension of Jesus and the disciples now going back to Jerusalem, in that upper room it says this, then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called Mount, the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city, <clears throat> Excuse me. And when they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, and the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. So what they knew to do when they didn't know what to do was to pray and seek the Lord. Now, Jesus had hinted at this, and he said, listen, go to this room and begin you know, to gather together and wait. But the disciples, again, as good Jews, knew when you don't know what to do, when you don't know the future, when you're, you, you, you have no understanding, the best thing you can do is pray. And I dare say, the best thing you can do is pray and worship if you don't know what to do. And so, as we're beginning a new year, We've emphasized as a church prayer. So this whole week, we're having a week of prayer. And so as I record this, we're about halfway finished. But I felt to share this message, even as it's going to show at the close of our prayer time, because I think it's an important message for all of us. And as we embark on a new year, <clears throat> a, lot, a lot of excitement, obviously, uh, New Year's resolutions, I, I know as a church, the Lord has laid upon us two great endeavors, and that is to begin to seek the Lord for renewal in this church and to bring in worship leaders and to bring in some guest speakers that are going to bring some renewal in our church, some refreshing. Second of all, along with renewal, we need to endeavor to position our church on a reproduction footing to reproduce every single ministry in this church, to multiply every single ministry in this church. Why? For the purpose of church planting. Why? For the purpose of extending the kingdom of God through the multiplication of our church. And so this is a very, very um, uh, ambitious uh, endeavor, but I dare say, the Lord began to lay that on my heart in October, and I know I've shared about that in previous videos. But, but the disciples had no less um, an incredible endeavor in front of them, because what did Jesus tell them just before he ascended in Acts 1.8? <clears throat> Excuse me. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and in the uttermost bounds of the earth. And so he told them to literally go out and reach the world with the gospel. But in order to do that, they needed to be endued or clothed with power from on high when the Holy Ghost fell upon them on the day of Pentecost. And we see this in Acts chapter 2. So as we seek the Lord in prayer this week, we're seeking the Lord for power. We're seeking the Lord for his anointing. We're seeking the Lord for his vision and his direction. We're seeking the Lord for an endowment of power so we can do what God is calling us to do. And this is no different than how the Lord spoke to Zerubbabel through the prophet Zechariah. If you look at Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, Zerubbabel was charged uh, along with other Jews, to rebuild Jerusalem, to rebuild the temple. Uh, after the fall of Jerusalem to the Babylonians, the temple was, was destroyed, it was burned down. <clears throat> the walls were gone, the temple was destroyed and obliterated. So after the seven years of captivity, they come back. And of course, if you're Zerubbabel, if you're the governor of Judea, and you see what used to be this incredible temple and this incredible um you know, uh, complex, suddenly devastated. And you're going, how in the world am I going to do that? And you're thinking of all these human resources. You're thinking of the human resources of people and maybe money <clears throat> and actual building 
stuff to, to rebuild it, and you're probably overwhelmed. But this was the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Again, familiar scripture, most of us know this. Ze Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. And so we know from this section of scripture, Zerubbabel was forbidden to rely on the arm of the flesh. He was forbidden to rely upon military might. He was forbidden to rely upon economic resources. He was forbidden to rely upon human resources. But he was charged by the Lord to rely on the Lord himself, to rely on the power of his spirit to begin to move and to begin to work in this project. <clears throat> and we know from the scriptures that that's exactly what they did. They were able to rebuild the temple. And it was by the power of the Lord. In other words, in the natural, it looked like there was no way, shape, or form. They were able, they were going to be able to do what God had called them to do. But they did it because, again, the strength was God's, not theirs. And so, as we are continuing in this week of prayer, I want to prompt every one of you that are watching this video that just because the week of prayer might be finished by the time you watch this video, Nevertheless, the charge to all of us is the charge given to the disciples. Wait until you're endued with power from on high. Begin to pray and seek the Lord. <clears throat> the charge to Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Because prayer changes things. Prayer is a profound act of humility to a Western individualized culture that is used to doing things ourselves. Hey, I'm an American. I can do it myself. Because again, if you're an American, you are, you stand on the shoulders of the pilgrims and the pioneers and the entrepreneurs and the settlers and individuals that had to, for lack of a better way of saying it, they had to shoot their own food and hunt their own food and build their own cabins and forge for their own survival on their own because there was no one there to help them, right? And in the same way, as a modern day Americans, we are so used to the government taking care of us, government checks, government welfare. We've got lawyers, we've got doctors, we've got health insurance, right? We've got all these trappings of, and, and they're privileges. Uh, many of them are privileges, not all of them, but many of them are. They're blessings of living in a 21st century modern culture. Uh, I wouldn't say government largesse is a privilege because we're not supposed to rely on the government. But nevertheless, in the midst of that, God says to his people, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. In other words, in 2024, are you going to rely on the Lord and his empowerment? Or are you going to rely on your own wisdom, your own ingenuity, your own wherewithal, your own ability to make money, your own ability to make things happen? Because I don't know about you, but I want Jesus to build Lake Michigan Christian Center. And in order to do that, I've got to be humble enough to seek his face and say, Lord, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Lord, I'm asking and praying, Lord, you build this church. In fact, you build the church such that the gates of hell will not prevail. So, so the word of the Lord for us as we begin 2024, it's for me. <clears throat> it's for every one of us watching this video. It's in particular for the church family at Lake Michigan Christian Center. Upon whom, upon what are you relying in 2024? Are you relying on the arm of flesh? Are you relying on yourself? Are you relying on your own ability to figure things out? Or are you relying on the Lord? My desire for my life, my desire for my family, my desire for our church and our church family is that we are a people that say, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. God, we ask you to move. God, we ask you to work. God, we ask you to work and move in every ministry in our church in every family in our church, in every marriage in our church, 
and every child and every person may be dealing with sickness or struggle, we ask you, God, to move and work. God, we ask you to bring renewal to our church. God, we ask you to extend the kingdom of God through our church. Lord, in the natural, we don't necessarily see all the resources, but Lord, we trust in you that, Lord, you're going to build the church. Lord, even as your word says in 1 Corinthians, where it says, uh, Paul says, I, I watered and, and, and um, uh, I sowed and others watered, but God gave the increase. That's what we're doing when we pray. We're saying, God, please, we're going to water, we're going to plant, we're going to roll up our sleeves, so to speak, in ministry and do the work that's before us. But God, we're asking that you would bring the increase this year, God. And so can we pray as we conclude this message? Again, the message is for all of us to keep seeking the Lord. The message for all of us is to keep praying and to keep trusting in the Lord and stay in an attitude of profound humility, trusting God to work and God to move. But I want to pray for all of us toward that end. So can we pray? Father, I thank you for this word today, God. It's a simple word. It's simply wait until you've been clothed with power upon high. It's simply not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So God, I pray for all of us that call Lake Michigan Christian Center their home church. God, I pray that you would empower us with your strength, God. Lord, we purpose to not rely on our own wisdom, our own power, human resources, the arm of flesh. We purpose to rely upon you. And we ask you, God, to build this church. Build our church. Expand our church. God, we ask for renewal. We ask for extension of the kingdom, Father God. But we are aware of the fact that, God, unless you build the house, the laborers labor in vain. So, Lord, you build this house. Lord, you build this church. Lord, we rely upon you and we ask, send forth your spirit, send forth your power and enable us to be the people of God. You've called us to be in this new year of 2024 and beyond. I pray this now. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, it was great to be with you today. Forgive me for my voice. I'm, I'm recovering from a cold. I'm about an octave low. But I know you got the message, and hopefully you, like myself, will be committed to prayer and committed to continuing to lift up our church and 2024 and the expansion of the kingdom through our church because God's going to do it because it's not our work, it's his work and we're joining with him. It's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit, says the Lord. God bless you and until next week, take care.